Ukraine Today is joined by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania, Mr. Linus Linkevichus. Mr. Minister, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you for having me. Uh, Mr. Minister, you have always been the harsh critic of the EU policy towards Russia over Ukraine. Do you think the EU and the West in general should be doing more to uh, stop the Russian aggression in Ukraine? I would argue I'm not critic of EU policy because I'm taking part in the forming this policy myself. Maybe I'm sometimes suggesting more, more, uh, maybe robust steps, uh, maybe more consistent. But that's that's normal procedure of discussions. I, I really I think that we have to do more because we see the results. The results are not very favorable, and even now we are hearing some voices of calming down the situation, which is, in my view, nothing to do with that. Mr. Minister, there was a lot. There were a lot of talks in Ukraine and a lot of expectations among Ukrainians that the West should at some point start supplying Ukraine with defensive lethal weapons. In your opinion, is that a wise decision on the part of the West? And if so, at which point Ukraine can expect start to receiving the defensive lethal weapons from the West? We have to help Ukraine by all means, political, economic, financial, definitely militarily. I'm not saying about sending soldiers, nobody asking for that. But we have to support the Ukrainian military because they are standing external aggression. And these external forces are really, I shouldn't say professional, because they are backed by professionals. They are backed by the Russian Federation. It's quite clear. And supplied. And uh, su supplies going as heavy weapons, rocket launchers, tanks. And this is really very serious. So in order to withstand all of that, uh, very difficult. And those who are talking about political diplomatic, peaceful solution, I, I can agree, it sounds very convincing, but in fact it's uh, for in, in favor for a Russian military solution, because other side doing something else than we would like to see. So uh, to, to cut it short, yes, I think we have to help Ukrainians, uh, and uh, we Lithuanians, we're doing that, definitely who we are to, to make a difference in the, in the picture, but we have moral right to say that others should do at least something in order to help uh, Ukrainian military as well. In 1994, Ukraine signed the Budapest Memorandum, giving up its nuclear arsenal, um, in exchange of the guarantees of uh, territorial integrity. And these very guarantees and the, the other signatories to uh, the Budapest Memorandum, namely the US, the UK and France, they failed to fulfill their obligations back in March 2014, when Russia illegally annexed Crimea. Uh, there are a lot of people in Ukraine saying that even now, a year, more than a year ago, uh, when the violations of territorial integrity of Ukraine on the part of Russia are continuing, these countries aren't doing enough. Would you agree with that? I would say we all should, uh, should draw lessons from the past and uh, definitely very, very easy now to discuss uh, from the distance from that time. But uh, definitely, you're right. Uh, something, uh, something was uh, missed. Something, something uh, was not implemented. Uh, some, some probably commitments were broken, and uh, that shouldn't shouldn't be repeated. So now we should focus what we should do now. And definitely, every every country doing uh, the best they can do. Uh, I, I, I believe, and probably many believe that they're really doing doing what they can in the situation. But coming back to your first question, it's not enough. Mr. Minister, what is your position on the Minsk, uh, the latest Minsk peace agreement, which uh, is in effect for the sixth month already? Obviously, uh, from, the re from the reports on the ground, the truth isn't working. There is simply no truth. Do you see any other alternatives? Do you think that Ukraine should cling to this, to this pseudo uh, truce agreement? Uh, first of all, I'm never talking about Minsk agreement as, as you said, in singular form, right? It's plural because it's, it's a package. And frankly speaking, this last piece is the weakest one. And uh, in my view, very difficult to implement, verify. Uh, but it's another story. So we should took into account, take into account all, all package, all picture. And uh, this is really important to, to keep a pressure. And uh, we still believe this is doable, possible. And I can commend that Ukrainians, uh, they are doing really the, the best in order, in order to implement. Uh, but it's, again, not possible if we, will, if we see these uh, repeated violations. And uh, definitely we have to keep, keep a pressure, uh, although it's not easy, not, 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 not so to say the best probably solution. But since we do not have any other option uh, at the table right now, 
what could be better. So let's let's stick to this. What what is really some chance at least to get out of this of the situation? The stalemate, I would like to say. Uh, really, we we have to, to to make sure and to do our best in order to to facilitate or, or to help or even to keep pressure, as I said, to make sure that this agreement will be fulfilled. All package of these agreements. Ukraine is very heavily pressured to 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 maintain this peace, to maintain the the, the peace agreement. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there are um, a, a lot of people in Ukraine uh, are um, inviting the government to to recognize there is a full fledged war uh, taking place in eastern Ukraine. So do you think Ukraine isn't doing enough in this respect? Perhaps declaring a, a state of war in the Donbass region would be a viable solution? Uh, words, uh, names, uh, slogans, uh, emotionally they're important, but uh, we really should focus on what's happening on the ground in reality. Really, it uh, reminds like, like war, right? It's, it's uh, very difficult to argue. Uh, shootings every day, victims unfortunately every day, so who can call it ceasefire, who can call it something else. But nevertheless, uh, we should be consistent not to allow somebody, well, to be provoked, uh, because even if it's difficult, even it's, if it's fragile, but it's still, still alive and we have to do, to do the best we can do in order to do everything we can do at this moment. If that will not be possible, should be other options uh, uh, find it, but, but, uh, but now we really should be consistent and at least we shouldn't be the reason uh, to say to somebody that everything is broken because of, of the side uh, who, who would like to see the progress. And I mean, in this, in this regard, Ukrainian side first of all. So that's, that's the case. Well, you said that uh, we wouldn't like to see someone saying that it was broken, but yeah. a lot of people say that there was never real truth in place. Yeah, it's true, never, but again, uh, I would repeat, uh, what is the option, what we should do? If other option, full-scale war, uh, not only literally, but also, also, so to say, the fact, it's not the option, probably. So we should make sure to do the best we can do in order to avoid bloodshed and to, to look for this peaceful solution, at, at least, at least uh, try to do that, and uh, to be consistent. So it's not, uh, not important that somebody will not blame you, but it's also important to be consistent because you're on the right path, you're defending your country. In Ukraine, you're defending your sovereignty. It's not just your right, but I would say also your duty. And this is an important fact. Uh, no one can argue and no one can compare what doing Ukraine, defending own territory and people and independence and sovereignty and others who are trying to intrude, trying to take some pieces of land and uh, claim some sort of say, rights. It's not equal footing. It's a bit different or not a bit. It's really substantially different. And this is this is cannot cannot be neglected simply, Mr. Minister. Uh, earlier in our conversation, you said that um, you are not in favor of any uh, European country sending military troops into Ukraine. But what about pe peacekeeping troops? Several months ago, there were uh, talks and discussions about the possibility of sending the peacekeepers into the eastern Ukraine. Obviously, this is not impossible on the part of the UN because of Russia's veto right in the Security Council. What about some sort of EU or NATO uh, contingent, peacekeeping contingent? No, first of all, let's be, let's be uh, I, I didn't say that I'm not in favor. We were not asked. So let's put it right. When it uh, has to do with the international presence, let's put it like that, international observers, international footprint, it's always helpful. We are very much in favor. Let's look, look for the, for the uh, options, uh, what, uh, what is doable, what is possible practically, because again, it's not, not easy. Uh, to each agreement. So, generally speaking, of course, uh, I'm in favor, my country is in favor to have more presence. What, what kind of form we can find, we will able to find, it's another story. Uh, but let's try, and definitely those limited forces uh, which are present, of course, they will not make a difference. And even this big number of, of uh, sea observers, so to say, if they have no access to the uh, hot spots, they have no access to the separation line, uh, no access to the border crossings, the way it's controlled by somebody and uh, allowing to transfer ammunition, military, whatever. So any agreement, any Minsk, be it package or whatever else, will not work, simply. So again, international presence is a crucial and we have to find some forms. Not easy to find these forms, especially in the frames of United Nations and we know why, why. <laughs> because in that organization very difficult to reach serious, robust, so to say, position, even even resolution, 
if somebody has veto rights, so it's very difficult. But, uh, but nevertheless, we have to try at least to do whatever we can. We will continue our interview with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. And now back to the news on Ukraine Today.